What's going on guys? Welcome to another drug chug episode and today we'll be talking about calcium channel blockers and how they work plus some pharmacology. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, so the way we're going to break down this video is first we'll go into why calcium channel blockers are important. Then we'll talk about dihydroperidine calcium channel blockers and then the non-dihydroperidine calcium channel blockers and we'll explain that in detail. Then we'll go over the adverse effects of calcium channel blockers and then patients who have to avoid calcium channel blockers. Then we'll have a quick summary to recap everything we learned and then we'll have a short quiz as always to see what we retained. So to first understand why we use calcium channel blockers, we need to understand why calcium channels are important in our body. So the first thing we see here is that when calcium influxes or comes in, it affects our vasculature. Specifically, it's going to be our arteries where our blood flows through. So when calcium targets the calcium channels on our artery, it actually causes vasoconstriction, which causes an increase in blood pressure. So calcium can also influx into the heart and go through the calcium channels to increase heart rate. And the reason for this is because there are calcium channels on our SA and AV nodes on our heart. And when calcium comes in, it causes depolarization of our heart muscles, triggering it to contract. So it makes sense why we would want to target calcium channels in our body. Because if we block the calcium channels in our body, it could affect our arteries, which will prevent calcium from reaching the artery, causing vasodilation and decreasing blood pressure. Or on the other side, we could block the calcium channels on the heart, which stop the influx of calcium to the heart, which will lower or slow down our heart rate. So when talking about calcium channel blockers, there are only two types. There are the dihydroperidine calcium channel blockers, or DHP, and the non-dihydroperidine channel blockers, which we'll talk about later. So focusing on the dihydroperidine calcium channel blockers and what makes this type of calcium channel blocker important and special is that they only work on the vasculature, meaning they only work on our arteries. So if we remember, calcium wants to come to our artery to cause vasoconstriction. But these types of calcium channel blockers or the DHP calcium channel blockers will block the channels of calcium from reaching the artery. And this in turn causes vasodilation, which in turn causes a decrease in blood pressure. So remember, dihydroperidine calcium channel blockers only work on our arteries. They have no effect on our heart. So by far the most common DHP calcium channel blocker that we see prescribed to patients is amlodipine or brand name Norvasc. And amlodipine actually also comes in a combination product called Lotro. And it consists of amlodipine and benazapril, which is an ACE inhibitor. We actually talked about how ACE inhibitors work in another video. So I'll link that down in the description below if you haven't seen it yet. So another product that we have is called Nefetipine XL, which is brand name Procardia. And the way I remember this one is Nefetipine has the word knife in it. And Nefetipine cuts the heart's workload down in half. And then we have a product called Philodipine, which is also brand name Plendil. So if there's one thing you guys are going to remember from this video, let it be this, that all DHP calcium channel blockers end in dipine. So amlodipine, nefedipine, philodipine, they all end in dipine. Because these calcium channel blockers cause vasodilation in our arteries, 
it makes sense that these would be used to treat angina pectoris and hypertension. So for angina pectoris, it means that the patient's heart is working hard and that they're having that pain in their chest. So if we relax the vasculature or we relax the arteries, the heart doesn't have to pump as hard to push blood through the relaxed arteries. And hypertension makes sense because if we block the calcium channels on our arteries, we directly cause vasodilation, which decreases blood pressure. So you might be asking, what the heck is a dihydropyridine? And all it is, is this nitrogen ring, and where it gets its name from is actually from the top here because it has two hydrogens. And if we look at the structures of the three DHP calcium channel blockers that we just talked about, you could see that they all have this ring structure. They all have this dihydropyridine. So now on the flip side, we have our non-dihydropyridines. And again, here we only have two drugs to remember, which is great news for us. So we just have verapamil or diltiazam. And if you notice, these structures do not have that dihydropyridine ring. So this is why these are considered the non-DHP calcium channel blockers. All right, so what makes the non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers different? Well, again, we only have the two diltiazem and verapamil, and diltiazem's brand name is Cardizem, and verapamil's brand name is Verilan, and they have other brand names, but these are probably the most common that you'll see. And what's very interesting is that because these are non-dihydropyridines, it can vasodilate our arteries and it can also affect our heart rate. So the non-DHPs do two things. They relax our blood vessels and they lower our heart rate. And again, the way these non-DHP calcium channel blockers work is they block these calcium channels in our arteries and they block the calcium channels in our heart, which dilates our blood vessels and it lowers our heart rate. So who would we use these non-DHP calcium channel blockers on? Well, if our patient is experiencing angina pectoris or they have pain in their chest area because their heart's working too hard, they would be a good candidate. And Again, if a patient has high blood pressure or hypertension because it dilates our blood vessels and it lowers our heart rate, again, this would be a good agent to use on this type of patient population. And lastly, if our patient is experiencing atrial fibrillation, which just means the top part of the heart or the atria is overactive, it would make sense that these non-DHP calcium channel blockers will affect the heart and it'll actually slow down and relax the conduction of the atria. So now that we know what calcium channels do in our body and how calcium channel blockers actually work, let's go into some of the adverse effects that we could see in our patients that take these calcium channel blockers. And please note that these adverse effects are for both DHP and non-DHP calcium channel blockers. So the first side effect that we run into is dose-dependent peripheral edema, which is just the accumulation of fluid in our limbs. And in the picture here, it shows the edema in our legs. And this is what we commonly see. And the reason for this is it's believed that because these agents cause vasodilation, it causes our blood vessels to become leaky. So fluid leaks out of our blood vessels, and because of gravity, it pulls the fluid down towards our feet, and that's why we see this fluid accumulation. Now, I do want to note that this is dose-dependent. So if a patient is experiencing a lot of edema, one thing we could do is just reduce the dose. Another thing that we could actually do is we could also incorporate an ACE inhibitor 
to help reduce the water accumulation. And if you think back, we had a combination product, Lotril, which is very convenient because it has both drugs in one dose. And the last thing that we can do is actually tell the patient to start wearing something called compression socks. And what compression socks are, are essentially they're very tight socks that start at the feet and they work their way up gradually becoming less and less tight. And what these do is that it pushes the fluid back up to prevent the fluid from accumulating in the lower limbs. Patients can also experience headache because of the vasodilation. Patients can also have flushing in their face or rosacea because of the vasodilation again. And anytime we mess with blood pressure, there's always a chance of the patient becoming dizzy. And again, that's because of vasodilation. So it'd be a good idea to let our patients know that they should start standing up slowly after taking their first dose to prevent any falls from happening. I do want to quickly mention patients or situations where you want to avoid the use of a calcium channel blocker. And the first note here would be to not use them in patients with heart failure. And this would be for both DHP and non-DHP calcium channel blockers. And the reason for this is, is that the edema side effect, it could be very detrimental to our heart failure patients because they already have a hard time with the fluid buildup. And typically heart failure patients need to reduce the amount of fluid that they have. The next thing to be aware of is our patients that have bradycardia. So if they already have a slow heart rate, you definitely don't want to use a calcium channel blocker, specifically a non-DHP calcium channel blocker, because that slows down the conduction of the heart. Now, if a patient is using a beta blocker, we do not want to add on a calcium channel blocker because we could actually stop the heart or slow it down to the point where it could damage our patient. So the last point here has to also do with non-DHP calcium channel blockers like the point before. And we're focusing on drug metabolism. And it's good to know that both verapamil and diltiazem are non-DHP calcium channel blockers are sip 3A4 enzyme inhibitors, meaning they inhibit the enzyme in our liver that processes drugs. And CYP3A4 is one of the most common enzymes our body uses to break down or activate or inactivate drugs. So it'd be a good idea to see what other medication regimen our patients are on to make sure there's no contraindication because if these drugs inhibit CYP3A4, there could be a buildup of other drugs that they're currently taking. All right, guys, let's do a quick recap of everything we learned. We know we have our DHP and non-DHP calcium channel blockers. We know our DHP calcium channel blockers only work on our vasculature or our arteries to vasodilate. And here we have the product amlodipine, which is brand name Norvask. We have a combination product with amlodipine and benazapril called Lotril, and benazapril was an ACE inhibitor. We have a product called Nifedipine XL or Procardia XL. We have a product called Philodipine, also known as Plendo, and all of these end in dipine, and they all decrease blood pressure through vasodilation of our arteries. On the other side, we have our non-DHP calcium channel blockers, these both work in the arteries and the heart. And here we only have two products. We have Diltiazem, brand name Cardizem CD, and Verapamil, brand name Verilan, and a bunch more. And these agents work by vasodilating our arteries and slowing down the conduction of our heart, giving us a total reduction in blood pressure and heart rate. All right, you guys made it to the end. So as promised, let's take a short quiz to see what we retained. All right, so first question. Which of the following is not a DHP calcium channel blocker? Is it A, nifedipine, B, Norvask, C, diltiazem, 
or E, philodipine. Number two, the brand name for nifedipine is Procardia, Norvasc, Cardizem, or Lotril. All right, question number three. The combination product, Lotril, contains which DHP calcium channel blocker and which other class agent? So is it A, amlodipine with an ARB? Is it B, amlodipine with an ACE? C, nifedipine with an ARB? Or D, nifedipine with an ACE? Question four. A very common and well-known side effect from calcium channel blockers is what? Is it A, peripheral edema, B, acne vulgaris, C, dry cough, or D, reflex tachycardia? All right, guys, we made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so. That really helps us out and it helps us reach other people who need this help. Also, check out some merch that we have. We have some new t-shirt designs all the time. And go ahead and look at our Patreon. We have deals starting at just a dollar to help support the channel. If you guys have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. Until next time.